and blessings beautiful souls, Sadava and I share to you, how are you today? I have for you a witch's chest unboxing from Earthly Alchemy, which arrived last week. So I would love to be able to share this interesting, beautiful little witchy box with you. So I took note of some of your comments a little while ago saying that you would prefer it if I did the unboxing facing you rather than with an overhead camera, which is what I've been using, you know, most often of late because I do have a rig set up for readings that is specific to that overhead look. But I've taken on board what you said and I'm going to do an unboxing of this beautiful witchy box facing you just like I used to back in the old days. The difference being that I don't have a table in between us like I used to because back in my old place you'd remember the camera sat at the opposite end of the table and so there was a table and I could put things on it and that's not happening today because that's not possible because things change. <laughs> Nevertheless, let's get stuck into this beautiful unboxing. I really do enjoy what Earthly Alchemy is doing with their witches' chests. I can tell you with every certainty that they are improving with each and every box and they are now just absolutely beautiful and they only get better with time. So do reach out to Earthly Alchemy if you have feedback pertaining to the content and the style of the box itself because they are open to feedback and they will take on board what you are saying so that they can adjust their contents to suit exactly what is desired by you. So, Earthly Alchemy is an Australian based company that I absolutely love to support because they really, really are very centered in what they do here in Australia, offering an incredible amount of services to the Australian pagan. And it is so nice to have a company do that because there aren't too many here in Australia that do do that type of work. They have markets that they attend, they have an online website which I will link below, and they are just forever active. Elder Crow, which is one of the creators of this box, is a practicing pagan witch and has interests in Stregaria amongst many other things and has had incredible leadership and mentoring by the beautiful Crimson Fire. So that's just a little bit of a backstory there. Michael, or Elder as he is preferred to be known as, is now a standalone powerful magical practitioner that is putting his heart and soul into creating these amazing boxes. So do bear with me after this long drawn out spiel because I am going to now, finally, at long last, unbox it. I have my trusty scissors and I'm just gonna get stuck in. It's not elegant folks. It's not an elegant unboxing. <laughs> Gotta give it to Australia Post. They do a good tough bag. Leave the tough. So here we have it. Upside down, back to front. What are we looking at? There we go. That is how it arrives. This beautiful box has gotten so much bigger. They've adjusted their logo. I love how they wrap it. It's very pretty the way that they do that. The presentation is really nice and they have worked hard on the design of their boxes. It's always changing, uh, which means that they are experimenting and growing and evolving. And that's really lovely. So I was gonna try and elegantly unwrap the thread, but it's knotted. It's bowed and it's knotted. So let's have a look. I'll show you first before I show myself. What does it look like? Oh, something dropped on the ground. Oh, it's their card. That's all right, nothing, nothing super critical. The tissue paper that they use is rather noble. I mean, it's very elegant, it's very posh. In fact, I would say, I do like it. There's layers and layers of it. Oh, I'm peeking in, I'm peeking in, yay! So, all right. Ooh. <laughs> It is the theme. The theme is what's making me cackle like a witch, really, but to be as stereotypical as I possibly can, nevertheless. It is Hedge Witch, which is chest number 31. They have done 31 of these bad boys. And the theme of this one is Hedge Witch. I cannot wait to see and experience Elder Crow's interpretation of tools and items and curios suitable for the hedge witch or the hedge witch enthusiast. Let's have a little look at what's in here. Should I read this first or should I? No, I'll just read it. Ooh, okay. We ground and we center. In this box, we have hedge witches foraging bag, handcrafted, I love it, witch's ward, eye sigil, amulet and spell, interesting, 
Hedge Brew Ritual Body Oil. Now I've said this before and I will never tire of saying it. Elder does the absolute best ritual magical oils. He is a clinical aromatherapist. He is a master of his craft. Turning over here, we have Witch's Harvest Incense Blend, Rose Water Flower Water. <gasps> what is it made of? Pure rose water. <gasps> rose hard to drop. Is it white roses? Is it white roses? Avoid the eyes. I, I just I quickly skimmed that. I'm obsessed with white roses for ritual. I'm just obsessed and it's so hard to find. I've been trying to find the entire plant to grow because we have pink and red roses here that were planted before I moved down to the property here in Tasmania. But there's no white roses. There's plenty around, but I'm very, very careful with the energy. So I don't necessarily want to pluck the petals off a rose bush that's been planted outside of a hospital for, for instance or a clinic or even a, a public school. I'm, I'm careful. I'm careful where I acquire these things. And so with all of this stress in the acquisition process, I figure I may as well go out and get myself my own bushes of white roses. And I did set out to do this and nurseries, the plant nurseries are starting to close over autumn and winter. So I'm going to have to wait a couple more months. Total bummer, I know. Nevertheless, and I just went on a side note, but you know, personal details is what, <laughs> is what we share to get to know each other. Isn't that right? So moving on here, we have Jasmine flowers. Oh, I do love some Jasmine. Jasmine book of shadows print, black tourmaline chips. Very nice. I'm a huge fan of black tourmaline, but let's have a little read of what he has to say pertaining to the contents of the chest. Hedge witch has become such a popular and growing practice within our pagan community. Indeed it has. As some of you know, that hedge witch is just a fancy term for solitary. <laughs> that could be disputed. Throughout history, the hedge witch is the term used for practitioners of magic, spirituality, medicine, and also forms of shamanism. As witches, we all start out on a journey as a hedge witch. We delve deep into various books regarding plant medicine, spells, crossing the hedge, astral travel, in brackets, and plant foraging. It encourages us to explore our shadows and light. Indeed it does. This month's theme is Hedge Witch. Within this parcel, you will find items which can assist you on your daily practice and travels around nature. Some practices within Hedge Witchery include the art of herbalism, potion making, divination, and also spell casting. One of the important things to remember is there is real, real, no, no real, Oh, that's back to fun. There is no real definition of what your practice should be like. Consider the hedge witch as the rebel. That I love. Yes. Uh, the one who follows their own path. Indeed. To some, hedge witch is also the term used for traditional witch. However, this can be debated by our pagans and historians over time. One of the common beliefs in this practice is the connection within nature spirits of land, and the ability to connect with your own personal power. We have handcrafted and blessed many of the items in this parcel to connect you to your own magic. Utilize them however you wish and add them to your own personal workings. We hope that this parcel provides you with a little insight into spellcrafting and magic. Many blessings, Crow and Lotus Moon. So there we have it. Some interesting definitions and chatter, some would say, about the hedge witch. And I ask you right now, question of the day, if you will. What does the term hedge witch mean to you? If you've never heard this term before, then just sit with it a little bit. What do you see in your mind? Tell me what it is that you feel. I would love to hear your thoughts on the practice of hedge witchery. And for those who actually consider themselves to be a hedge witch, how would you alter the description that I have just read out there by the beautiful Elder Crow? Please do add to the conversation by commenting below. And it's at this point that I would like to say, please do give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it so far. And if you would like to support my channel and my content and assist me to continue to create. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified when I post a new video. And let me tell you, 
some of the things that I'm working on as far as video content goes is specifically geared towards the beginner witch and demystifying some of the more common misconceptions pertaining to modern day witchcraft. So stick around because that is happening. In fact, today is Monday, I'm knocking off some readings and then I'm heading off to edit these six videos that I created specifically for you and for Patreon as well. Yay! Rightio, let's have a look at what is in this beautiful witch's chest. So I'm going to lift this bad boy up and I'm going to awkwardly balance it, thus while peeling back the layers of tissue paper. I'm feeling rather frisky today. Look at this. Look at how it is. Trying to make sure that things don't fall out. All that kind of good fun stuff. Right. So, I just thought that I would add right about at this moment that one of my favourite things that Elder May are his mists, his hydrosols, his sprays. I'm a huge fan. Second to that are his oils, of course. But this bad boy right here came in one of the recent uh, witch's chest and it is, if I can get this beautiful thing to focus, Look at this. I have been using this like crazy. It's Sacred Temple. It is for healing, protection, and clearing. And I spray it over my altar as often as I can. Another favorite of mine is his Chakra Balancer. I can't live without it. I just can't. I can't, I can't. It's part of my daily practice now. Nevertheless, I also like that he includes really unique little items. Like one of the recent boxes that I managed to unbox had rose resin in pieces. And oh, I just thought that was like the best thing ever. And so I'm looking forward to this, but let's go. We have here a beautiful, big, chunky bag of jasmine, yay. And he writes the attributes of the plant or botanical, we will call it. And jasmine is for prosperity, prophetic dreams. There we go. It's a good one to put in, a, in dream pillows. I do like it in dream pillows. It brings to it a, a sleep, a sleepiness to it, a, a peaceful sleepiness. I've, I have found in the past that combination with lavender, a little bit of rose. I could go on, I could go on, but I digress. Okay, so this is the little baggie with the chips of tourmaline. Now, you might be asking, what, what does one do with chips of tourmaline? One adds it to things. Like this is something that I would, I would choose a piece of this to put inside, or a couple of pieces in fact, to put inside a protection oil or a protection spray that I may make myself, a tea that I may make to sprinkle about, a floor wash. So many ways that you can use these tiny little chips of tourmaline. You can use them in mojo bags, you can use them in sympathetic magic, you can use them uh, to you can push them into candles if you warm the candle first. You can push them into candles as an additive to a particular uh, type of working that you're doing. So they're just some, just off the top of my head, some of the ways that you can use these beautiful chips. And I honestly don't have enough of crystals in this form. I would like more, in fact, much more, to put in jar work, to push into candles like I previously stated, to just do stuff with. It, it's really handy. They are really handy little knickknacks to have. Okay, so we have here that talisman. Isn't that spectacular? Yes, I think it is. Look at that. His last one was uh, done in pyrography as well because he's a big fan of pyrography. And he's a little bit of an artist in his own heart. I shouldn't say little because there's nothing little about his art. He's quite a good artist. And I do love that he makes his own witch's runes, which, he's, which he has done, his own goddess runes, some of these more um, talismanic type of uh, pieces, like these charms, these wards. This one here, I needs it. I've got a good, like as soon as I saw it, as soon as I read it on the page and I looked at it and I'm holding it in my hand, I'm like, I know exactly, exactly what I'm going to do with you. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> Nevertheless, all right, we are moving on. We have one of these bad boys here, which we are going to open. And as you can see, all items are carefully wrapped in biodegradable packaging, I might add. Big fan because I can chuck this stuff in the fire and it helps. <gasps> oh my God, I'm so happy, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. What was that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> to squeal at you like that. We have hedge brew here, which is a body oil, and we have rose water. Oh, bring it up close. Look at that. Amazing. 
All right, I don't know why I'm singing. I feel like I'm channeling some Mary Poppins right now. Like for reals. Rose water first. Oh my gosh. That reminds me of this like, this pagan witchy um, milky cologne thing. Um, that was oftentimes used as a deodorant. My mother was a freaking fanatic about it. And it's probably the first kind of deodorized product, if you will, that I ever put on my body. And I was so little, but it was Leche Jehoza, so the milk of the rose. And she loved it. She loved it. Like I'm saying, like rose, for me, it holds a special connection to my mum for, for various reasons. All right. Now we have the Hedge Witch's Brew, which has like, I love how it's got the toad. It's, it's the toad, right? Yes, it's the toad. Let's just bring this nice, nice and close to you so you can see. And it's in a dropper and it's a body oil. So I got to smell it. And I love the, the little touch with the, uh... oh yeah. I might like just little drop on the hand why not why not I mean look we're here <laughs> this smells like earth like good sweet fertile mystical earth it's got a woodiness to it like a like a woody earthy but there's like an undercurrent of sweet there, there must be patchouli in this I feel like I could sense patchouli. Does it say what's in there? Ingredients. Fractionated coconut oil, calendula, bit of a seed, cedar wood. <sighs> My nose will always get cedar wood and patchouli confused. Cedar wood was actually the very first essential oil I ever purchased in my life. I'm gonna chuck this into my kindling pile. Let us now look at the second little package. I really have to break the habit of saying little. It's because I'm a mum that I say it and I've got little children and I'm just, it's, that's where it comes from. It's not, it's not intended to be derogatory or diminutive, if, if that makes sense. Ooh, okay. Witch's Harvest Incense Blend. Can I just say how much I love the bottles? These bottles, Love them. Love the bottles. Love the labels. Okay, there it is. Look at that. And I'm going to spin it around so that you can see. Spinning awkwardly, but it's still doing it. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? I love the bottles. Like, they do good bottles. If you can see, you can almost see up here. Like, I've got a, an array of their bottles. Like, really good bottles. There's sacred temple blenders up there, and it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I want to smell it, because it looks really, like, rooty. <laughs> Rich with root, replete with root. It smells like tea. Oh, yummy. Good work, Elda. Just good work. Just good work. Alrighty, -o, let's see if I can get this in my... One. Yes. Alrighty, we have some Jasmine Book of Shadows artwork. So let us dust the. Okay, so here it is, and it is in a plastic sleeve. And I like this if you want to put it in a small binder or even a large binder. Very nice. Very, very nice. Okay, we are now down to what I believe to be the very, very last item. And I just want to show you how it is wrapped and how it was looking at me in the box. This is what it looks like. This. Oh, it's so cute. I want to use it as a tote bag. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Look at that. Mine frame because I can't see. That's a really big bag. <laughs> They've banned plastic bags in grocery stores here in Tasmania. <laughs> Guess he's taking this to the old supermarket. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It is so good. It is so good. It's beautiful. I just, I've obviously ironed this on. This is 
ironed on. I'm digging it. It's got a waxy feel, so hopefully it's not something that cracks or peels. Because I tend to make a mess of my calico bags, my cloth bags, and they end up having to get chucked in the wash. And over time, that can have some wear and tear, as I'm sure you can imagine. And this is made by Earthly Alchemy. So, absolutely freaking beautiful. Oh, and that was it. That's it. That is it for the box. So, we had the beautiful tote bag, which we've just seen. The jasmine artwork, which is beautiful. We have had the incense. Here, which is the Witch's Harvest Incense Blend. We have the Rose Water, the Hedge Brew, which is the body oil, and the Sigil or the, the Wardide, the Tourmaline Chips, the Jasmine in raw form or in flower form, and then of course the Inventory with the information. So that is this month, which is May, this month, Witch's Chest. Absolutely beautiful. I'm really impressed. As I've been telling you before, the quality of the items that you're going to find in these boxes are improving each and every time. I love that the oils come in such beautiful bottles. I love that the incense blends that they create over there comes in these beautiful glass bottles that can be recycled and reused. I love that everything is in recyclable packaging that I can then use for kindling or to compost. So there is a great deal to sort of applaud in these boxes and they are just getting better with time. So thank you so much for sharing in this beautiful witch's chest unboxing. I do hope that you will reach out to Elder Crow and just give him a little congratulations. I'll leave all of the links to Elder's Earthly Alchemy as well as his social media links and, uh, and maybe you, like me, can sort of tap on his shoulder and just ask him to get back to making some YouTube videos because I did hear in the whispers of the interwebs that he was considering doing a little bit of informational uh, work in the form of video about aromatherapy and, and aroma magic, if you will. And I think that he would be amazing at covering that topic, quite frankly. So if that is something that interests you, if you have an interest in that field, then send him a little message on Instagram and he will definitely respond to you. He's a lovely, lovely person, honestly. And he's just one of those people that I cannot wait to meet in real life because we're not that far. He's in Melbourne, I'm in Tasmania. There's a sea, yes. But flights are pretty cheap and I do plan on getting to Melbourne at some stage to meet all of that Melbourne crew. With that said and done, thank you so much for sticking with me. If you've made it to the end of this video, then thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm going to be speaking to you all very soon with another unboxing before I unleash my little series that I'm working on. So please do stick with me and I hope that you will consider subscribing if you haven't already because there's a lot of fun stuff that's taking place on this channel, including a giveaway. <laughs>